Okay. Hey, Pod Squad. Welcome back. I'm Diksha, and this is Yona. Uh, and then we have a special guest. But first, in case any of you are new to our channel, we just wanted to mention we are both now residents um, in a in podiatry, two different podiatry programs, and we're good friends who like to discuss everything and anything about podiatry to inform anyone who's interested in in the field. So let's start off introducing Dr. Nishu Vora. He is one of one of the people that's very special to us because he was our mentor since the very beginning at CSPM. Um, but I don't want to take away his thunder. I'd like him to also introduce himself. So thank you for coming and making the time to um, discuss fellowships with us because that's that's the main subject of the day, fellowships. And if any of you know, um, it's hard to find any information out there about that, for especially for podiatry. So again, thank you. Uh, exactly. Thank you guys for having me. Um, like Diksha said, my name is Nishu Vora. I went to CSPM for podiatry school where I met these, uh, these two us, uh, young little students. Um, and then I went to St. Mary's for residency, stayed in San Francisco, and I'm currently in fellowship out in uh, the Fort Lauderdale area at Westside uh, Regional Hospital. Um, it's in South Florida, if you guys know uh, where that is. Great. That's wonderful. Thank you, Nishu, um, as always. And thank you for taking the time of your day just to talk to us about fellowships. And like you said, it's it's pretty hard to find information about this stuff. And I feel like um, a lot of people don't give it enough attention, uh, especially in our field. Uh, so we're just going to have we have a list of questions for you and I, hopefully you can help answer it. Uh, the first one being, are fellowships really worth it? That's a great question. You know, that's exactly what you need to think about coming out of, you know, your second kind of second year, seeing how the third years are doing. Um, I think personally they are. Um, you can use that extra year to do bigger uh, cases under the guidance of another mentor, uh, the guidance of, you know, a, another group practice, wherever you kind of end up uh, and kind of hone your skills and be able to do these big cases by yourself, but, you know, under, under some more tutelage and kind of hone, hone that toolkit you have, the surgical skills, the clinical skills, ask your last minute questions, because you're going to feel comfortable coming out of residency, but then that first day where you're in clinic by yourself or operating by yourself, you got to, you know, double check and triple check exactly what you're doing. So an extra year uh, never hurts. Great. Uh, I actually wanted to back up a little bit. And also for anyone who isn't familiar, uh, what exactly are fellowships in the first place? And if you could talk about, uh, yeah, I know we just talked about whether it's necessary, but what is it? Why do people do it? Yeah, good question. A lot, Not a lot of people know about the fellowship process. You know, any field of medicine has has fellowship programs. It's basically an extra year or two or three of training to specialize in something a little bit more particular in the current field that you currently are, are studying. So in our podiatry world, uh, we have lots of different types of fellowships. Um, there's fellowships in limb reconstruction, uh, limb salvage, uh, reconstructive surgery, sports medicine, pediatrics, um, a lot of charcoal reconstruction. So, you know, you're going to get a little bit in, in residency, but the reason we do the fellowships is to become a specialist in a certain field within podiatry, and then hopefully, you know, go on and make, build your practice around that and treat the patients that you prefer, um, you know, based on those types of uh, specialties that you've been training in. No, oh, thank you for that, because I, I think, again, um, something that we always need to clarify is just the aspect of fellowships and the idea that we do it for these particular reasons, right? To get that extra training. Um, but at the end of the day, do you feel like you weren't confident coming out of residency and that's why you did a fellowship or did you just do it purely just so that you, you can hone your skills in a certain topic that you feel like you could use later down the line? 
Not at all. I was 100% confident after residency. We did enough cases. Most people that do fellowship, you know, not all, but some come out of residencies that they feel 100% comfortable, but it's just that extra spe specialty that they want to do. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about this, but there's a whole host of different fellowships. There's some that, you know, it's an extra year to help yourself if you didn't feel comfortable in residency. Um, and then there's those that are, you know, you feel very comfortable and you're doing this extra year to gain the extra expertise, basically. That's great. Yeah. Diksha, do you have another question? Yeah. So then that being said, uh, what are some things that we should look for in a fellowship when once we realize that that is what we want? Other than, hey, um, maybe this is a specific thing I want to hone in on. I know that was something you mentioned, but what are other things we should look for? Yeah, that's a that's a very loaded question. That's exactly what you need to start thinking about if you're thinking about fellowship. Um, the first thing you want to start figuring out is what do you want to do in practice? What kind of things are you liking in residency? What are you not? What are you kind of hoping to do in practice? And that will change throughout the years. But if there's a certain specialty you really enjoy, that's when you start thinking about fellowship. Um, and being able to do a little bit in that specialty. Would you say the location matters then? If there was a place that we really wanted to practice, should we should we be focusing there? Or is it just like residency where it's like, you know, if you try, you know, you do your best and you make the connections, then you're on your way to heading to where you'd like to practice? be honest, location does help. Um, it's not necessary, but like you said, you have to make the context. You have to network while you're in fellowship. I personally did it for the training. I wanted to go to a program where I know I'm going to get the best training, but it's not going to be necessarily where I end up, you know, long term. Um, so those are things you have to think about. If you can do the right training and make the right context, you can always end up where you need to. But being in the location you want to end up can help. Just the fact that you're there and um, uh, and already, you know, putting your name out there as the fellow of this attending and you know making those contacts. So um, I know you just went into what we should look for into a fellowship, but when should we actually start looking? Um, I think that's also a big thing as especially as first year residents and uh, Diction and I are definitely looking forward to probably doing fellowship in the future. When would you recommend us to start looking uh, during this time? That's, yeah, that's exactly what I kind of wanted to talk about and brush on because there's no guidelines anywhere. So um, timeline wise, interviews for fellowships are around summer, um, early fall, usually. So that's, you know, the beginning of third year for you. So the whole process usually starts mid second year. I'd say roughly, you know, winter time is when um, you want to start just reaching out, go on the ACFAS website, go on, um, go online, go on Google, see, see what kind of fellowships you want to do and just start reaching out, have your name out there, let the programs know you're interested um, and talk to the current fellow. That's a big thing. You have to get your name out and you have to talk to the fellow. Um, to be able to be on their radar is important because they're going to get a bunch of emails, they're going to get a bunch of applications, but um, you want to start that process not super early, but around winter time is when I would say is a good, good time, maybe even like late winter, January, February. Um, one thing is the fellowship breakfast at ACFES. If you are going to ACFES, I highly recommend going there and stopping by, talking to the uh, most of the the directors and the current fellows will be there. I'll be there uh, this coming February. So if you can be there, that's that's good way to get your name out. Have your CV face to face um, kind of um, contact with the directors. Uh, so in that timeline, so winter time, start reaching out, get to know the fellows. I'd say early spring is when you should have your application ready to go. That means look online, look at what the ACFES website says for applications, have your 
um, transcripts ordered, your um, your personal statements. Uh, there, you need three letters of rec. That doesn't mean you know ask in spring. You should be asking in the winter time to have them ready in the springtime um, to have them ready, and then you kind of just start sending them out as the application deadlines come. Every program has a different deadline, so you have to be aware of that. Look on the ACFAS website or you know wherever where wherever you kind of are applying to and ask the fellow, you know, hey, when 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 are applications due? Because those are subject to, to change. Those are not, you know, set in stone dates. So the earlier you apply, the better. Um, so they know you're interested. And then <clears throat> if you can and timing and money and funding allows, you should try to visit um, somewhere in that spring, early summer time. Uh, getting that face-to-face -face is really important for the programs. Uh, unfortunately, I was towards the end of COVID, so I don't get to visit a lot of programs, but um, it's even some of my interviews were on Zoom somewhere in person. So I think a lot of programs are coming back to having more in-person visits and in-person interviews. So it's really important to try to get that face-to-face -face when you can, um, because what they're looking at is can I deal with this person for a year is basically what they're looking at. They know you're smart. They know you, they have your application. You went through residency, you went through a good program. The, the next step is, you know, are you someone that we can work with for a year and get along with? Are you teachable? Kind of the same process for uh, residency and things like that, but it kind of starts all over um, with a little bit of a less, less guidance and less uh, tiered system. So there, so that's helpful. No, that was extremely helpful. That was uh, very elaborate and like, yeah. think, honestly, I'm going to be honest. I, nobody really talks about this again, like I said, and it's something that I don't even know, like about just visiting. It's sort of like, it brings me back to externships and like trying to visit programs. It's kind of the same thing that you're kind of doing with fellowships, because I know for one, I had a little fellowship dinner with the director or directors as well as other attendings. And there's not a lot of fellowships out there. And there's a lot of students or a lot of residents who are graduating who are interested in fellowships. So not everyone gets a fellowship. It's not that easy. So you really have to put your name out there, like you said. And I actually, I had a question uh, about that still. So yeah, you were really elaborate with everything you just said. This is all something I've never heard of, all things I've never heard of. Um, are all and are all of these fellowships just one fellow? So it's just you and and the attending you're working with, or are there ones that you you're with others? Or how how do these work? How are it's they? very case by case. There are, most programs are one fellow a year, but there are you know a handful that take two a year. Two is probably the max you'll see. Um, some have residencies connected to them like mine does. So you get to teach with the residents, um, but you'd never take away from their cases. So there, there's always, you know, other attendings outside of the residency that you're going to be working with. Um, but you kind of help support the academic portion. Um, every, every program is kind of set up differently, um, but they're set up to basically do a bunch of surgery. So you want to make sure you're looking at that when you're asking the fellow, you know. So this is going to be one of the other topics to talk about is, you know, how do you pick a residency and where do you, what should you look for? So I'll kind of just transition to that. But um, when you're doing your research, reach out to the fellow and talk to them about the program. Um, you and your mind should already know what you're looking for. Um, you know, types of cases, ask about the diversity, ask about the weekly schedule. Is it half clinic, half OR? Like, you can always ask about that. The fellows are very friendly when I went through it. They were very open to discussing, you know, the program. They didn't want to hide anything from you. So um, it's usually the same for the most part when you're going to be going through it. Um, you know, if you want to do Sharko, like, make sure you're doing that program is doing that. Mine does not do that. Um, when I was going through it, I wasn't planning on doing Sharko cases. So I reached out to fellowships that were doing more sports medicine and reconstructive surgery. So that's mostly what we do. Um, it's always hard to ask, you know, how much are you doing versus how much is the attending doing? But um, there are ways to ask that. And, you know, they'll be pretty open and honest with you about it. So make sure you 
you're not just a fourth year resident, you know, pushing papers. Um, just to put it bluntly, it's, uh, you know, there are some programs that may not have such a high surgical case volume and you're helping out in clinic a lot more than you probably should be. Um, so make sure you're aware of that going into it. Um, it's just per kind of different specifics like that, uh, that you should just be friendly with the fellow about and ask about. Um, never hurts to ask if they say something, then you know you got your answer that way. Speaking of which, are there any resource fairs for fellowships specifically, just like how we had it for residency when we were students? Nope, it's, it's a free for all. There's, like I said, there was not a lot of guidance for me when I did this. So I asked a lot of my upperclassmen that I was close with, they were very friendly and open, you know, this is what you should do, this is how you should do it, um, which is why I wanna do this talk to just get more information out there. And, you know, there's, this is like the perfect time to do it because the process is kind of starting for the current second year. So um, just kind of starting that process there are some guides online that you can look up. I forget the websites, but um, other than the ACFAST website, there isn't a whole lot of information on fellowships. And the CPME, sorry, I keep forgetting to mention, the CPME also has accredited um, fellowships. So it's important to look at, it's not quite necessary, but you should have some sort of accreditation that goes along with your fellowship. So you get a certificate at the end of the day that you can give to your hospital to get the privileges that you need to do those cases that you were trained to do in fellowship. Um, when you go out and um, kind of Google fellowships and podiatry, some are not accredited. Um, so you have to keep a log, but I don't know how that works with hospital privileges and things like that. Got it. No, that's that's important. I because I've heard of non accredited accredited fellowships, so I didn't know if there's if that's a bad thing or a good thing. But it just sounds like it might be a little bit of a hassle if you're having to log cases and prove to the hospital, as well as we don't even know if those hospitals still accept that. So um, that's a very fine line to like kind of cross. But um, something more personal, um, would you say? visiting during your first year of residency is a good idea for fellowships or would you say would you just save that for your second year when you're better built in terms of your experience as well as your knowledge base or what do you what are your thoughts on that i don't think it's a good idea to come in your first year not just because of the knowledge base it they're looking for their next fellow. They're not thinking about two years ahead. Mm -hmm. um, if you visit in your first year, you're gonna get piled in to the current class and they won't really you know, kind of remember you. So it's good to just do it in your second year when you're applying for the following class. So interviews are in summertime, late summer, early fall. The fellow is chosen usually in the fall time. So, you can kind of start visiting after that, I would say. Um, you know, the fall of your second year um, is usually, like that's probably the beginning of second year is a, is a good time to visit. Got it, no, that's good, that's good to know. Yeah. And then, um, Diksha, do you have any other specific questions? Um, I have <laughs> so much, many sorry. now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have so many. Um, <laughs> I, I, I didn't even realize how little I knew about the entire process, but um, uh, where do I start? So no, I'll, I'll need, I'll need a second, but as far as, <laughs> yeah. um, as far as what we kind of already plan to ask, um, what makes, what makes a strong candidate? Like, how can we make sure we're putting our best foot forward for a fellowship? Good question. Um have a strong CV, which means um, you're coming from a good program, um, have good letters of rec, uh, you're required to have one from your director and then two others, so three total. I highly recommend trying to get an orthopedic doctor to write you a letter of recommendation, that always helps. Um, research is usually a must for most programs because you are required to do research in fellowship. So they wanna know you have a background in doing it. You know how to write a paper, you know how to do a poster. 
Um, the attendings sometimes may or may not have time to help you do stuff. So you having that already in your back pocket is very, very kind of helpful to get you into the door. Um, posters, it doesn't have to be, you know, 20 posters or something like a few posters or a case study or write up somewhere is always helpful. Have that on your CV. Um, and then the visit, you know, be personable, be friendly, be helpful. Um, don't be overly aggressive. The same stuff as uh, residency clerkships kind of starts all over again, but um, just having that extra knowledge that you're getting through getting in residency is going to help you look kind of stand out in, in fellowship interviews and visits. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Oh, so, uh, may I ask the question I just remembered? I really, okay. So, as far as the certifications, what, which ones would you say maybe help with, say I, I wanted to work at a hospital or I wanted to work at a private practice, do, do the certifications matter in that sense? So it's like certain certifications, like I should get this one if I'm working at a hospital, I should get this one if I want private practice. No, not necessarily. Um, CP, the two big ones are CPME and ACFAST. CPME only has about 10 to 12 programs so far. ACFAST is growing rapidly, uh, probably about 60 to 70 programs now for fellowships. Um, I have to say CP, so our program is probably one of the only ones that's accredited by both. So I was, we were going through the paperwork, so I know a little bit about both. Um, <clears throat> CPME is a little bit more rigorous in getting that accreditation. So um, I guess it's good to have CPME, but ACFAST is just as good. Hospitals aren't really looking between the two, as long as there's some sort of accreditation. When you talk about private practice versus hospital practice, even though you're in private practice, you still need hospital privileges to operate. So you're applying for the same thing, whether you're in a hospital or private practice. Um, you know, outside of surgery centers. Um, so they're still going to look for something that has some sort of certification. Um, so I, I don't think one versus the other is really that important. Got it. Thank yeah. you. That's good. Thank you. Um, other than that, I don't have any more specific questions. I think you've pretty much hit everything that I could think of. Diksha, do you have any other ones? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I'm down to listen. Keep, keep them coming. You guys got yeah. me. So yeah. Um, okay. So now mm, I keep, I keep forgetting. Like I think of so <laughs> many as you're speaking, because this oh, is all new can, to me. I can ask one. Yeah. Uh, I think also for me, there's so many there's, there's a lot of fellowships out there, not, not too many, but there's a good amount. Would you say when you're applying and looking at fellowships, I know you're honing it down to what you want specifically, but how many would you say you would look into? Would you give yourself like three fellowships to look into and try to reach out to three? Or did you specifically were just like, you know what, one, this one is for me. That's all I'm going to do. I'm putting all my marbles in one basket. So I can talk about what I did. Um, I looked at location. I wanted to be near a big city hmm. and I wanted a program that was doing reconstructive surgery, not so much Charco, but, um, you know, sports medicine, recon, uh, like revisional surgeries. Um, so those were my two main kind of points to look at. Um, I think I applied to about eight or nine and I interviewed at probably just about six or seven. Um, and then, you know, you just go through the process for that. So it's kind of the same as residency interviews. You don't want to do like 15, um, but you should throw your hat in the bucket if that's something you want to do. So <laughs> the secret, not so secret, ACFAS applications are free. So you're not spending any money on applications. You're spending money on the visitations and all that stuff. Um, so 
as much as you can afford to go and interview or go and visit, I would say apply to as many as you can. Um, yeah. That's great. Uh, I'm glad it doesn't cost money because those applications can cost, they can pile up real quick. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And in that same similar light, I should say, uh, if you apply and you happen to not get into any of the fellowships and you start working for a year, could you still apply again to fellowships? Or if you decided way in the future, 10 years in, you want a fellowship, can you go back and still do that? Yeah, so we had a couple of um, applicants that were in practice for three or four years. They applied um, just to, you know, like we talked about, get do some bigger cases um, and then go back to their practice. They like worked out, you know, a year off basically. It is a pay cut, but it, it is possible. It's just in reality, it is tougher to do. Um, once you're settled somewhere, you got that contract set up, got that paycheck coming in, you're building your patient base. Um, it's hard to leave and then start that over again. Um, so you just have to think about, you know, trying to do it earlier rather than later. Right. No, that's a good point. I You don't really think of that. And I, yeah, I didn't really think of that. I think that's something to definitely think about as you're thinking about fellowships. Yeah, um, this is all new to us. So really, I'm sure a lot of our viewers are happy that you spent time to discuss all of this with us. Um, so our time is running out. So um, are, is there anything else, any other tips and last minute things you'd like to share with us? Um. I think that was it. We covered everything that I wanted to kind of share. You know, you're you're still, you know, I'm talking to the second years, but you're not going to be the same resident you are in a second year as you will be in third year. So you don't know that you need a fellowship yet, but it doesn't hurt to start thinking about it um, and, you know, and just reach out and see what you think. Uh, you're going to be doing a lot more cases in your third year and, you know, holding your skills, just like we're talking about in fellowship. But um, if it's something you want to do, you, you should start the process early. Just kind of start thinking about it and figuring out what you want to do. I think more and more people are doing it. It does help a little bit having that fellowship on your job application, um, especially if you're trying to get into a hospital or multi-specialty group that can help. Um, and then once you're in fellowship, uh, take advantage of the opportunities you have. I think one thing I didn't realize is the reps and the vendor vendors that you're going to work with are very friendly, very helpful. There's a lot of fellowship courses. Um, so reach out to your reps as a third year and try and do them if you're not going to do fellowship. But in fellowship, you're going to go to one probably like every month. I've already done three or four. I got two or three coming up. So the courses are very helpful. Um, just getting your hands on all the systems and things like that. So I think that's all I got. Anything else, last minute questions? I, I, I think again, I think you've covered like the whole, <laughs> I think if we do have any questions, I think once we post this video and we have people asking us questions, we'll probably put in the comment se section of like the YouTube video. So that way, when people come back to this video, they can read also the comment section if there's any more questions. Because I know this is definitely one of those topics that a lot of people want to know. Um, I think it's definitely not as discussed as much as we just discussed right now, which is very nice. And I think this is going to help, uh, I think, students as well as residents moving forward. Because <clears throat> I was always interested in fellowships regardless. Um, so I, I think this is a good insight to think about as you go through what residency you want and what fellowships are connected with that residency, who they know. Because I think at the end of the day as well, it's connections as well. I think a big part of fellowships, connections, 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 who you talk to, how you present yourself. So this is this is really good. And I, I appreciate this. We appreciate it, Nishu. Yeah, it's like a mini course. So it was great. <laughs> <laughs> a little lecture. <laughs> yeah, hopefully short and sweet. Yeah, I'm always around for more questions if you guys need a part two. Um, and... If anything comes in from the comments, shoot them to me or have them contact me. That's not a problem.
Yeah, and we'll, we'll put your contact information as well um, at the below in our YouTube video as well. So that way people know who to contact as well if they have any more specific questions because you're the expert in this. Um, so. I don't know, expert, but just <laughs> been no, through it. So just sharing, sharing what I know. Exactly. Um, with that being said, I, um, if you guys have, this is to our views, if you guys have any questions about anything, feel free to shoot us a message at uh, the podiatry journey, as well as email us um, at the podiatry journey at gmail.com, or it's actually the DPM journey at gmail.com. Keep forgetting we have to change that. And again, special thank you to Nishu for joining us tonight and um, helping, up, helping us answer uh, any questions about fellowships and just uh, elaborating on anything that we have um, that was in our mind. So anyways, with that being said, Pod Squad signing out. Take care, guys. Good luck, guys. Take care. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Bye.